It's news time. We don't want to give you the blues time. So here it is. I'm Bill Taj. How you doing this morning? And I hope you had a good weekend. Just fly, fly out here driving, driving me crazy. crazy. Good morning. This is 17 Update Early in the Morning. I'm Bill Tush. Sitting here inside your TV set with all the news. Dick Weber of St. Louis finished second, and Mark Roth of New York was third. We'll be right back. I'm Bill Teich, and our director, as usual, the amazing Mr. Dynamite and Troll, was on audio tonight. This program has been pre recorded. What a dope. He always forgets. <laughs> Arnold's victory apparently came because of Rizzo's win. Marty, the marijuana nibbling mouse, never rehabilitated, his, and he died of old age. A little field mouse found fame last year when San Jose, California police caught him in a trap baited with marijuana. He had been nibbling marijuana in the narcotics evidence locker. Police overlooked his vices <laughs> and made Marty the department mascot. You can take it, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Police overlooked his vices and made Marty the department mascot. A spreading rash and heavy loss of fur afflicted him in his advanced age, and he was hospitalized in the San Jose Pet Clinic last month. He died in his sleep there on Tuesday. Marty was one toke over the line. <laughs> This is 17 Update, early in the morning with Bill Tush. And directed by Emmy Certificate Award winner, Mike Allen. Now, here's Bill Tush. The turkey. Good morning. How are you this morning? As the guy said, I'm Bill Tush. And our weather forecast calls for some clearing overnight with a low around 40 degrees, partly sunny, windy on Friday, high around 60. It'll be clear and colder on Friday night with a low around 30. Then on Saturday, sunny and cool. Hope that holds up with a high expected around 50 degrees. I'd like to show you our satellite radar weather picture, but I didn't get time to stop by the drugstore and pick it up tonight. The Hawks lost to the Bullets last night. National acclaim. I was up in Tacoa about a month ago. Very, very nice city. Residents of at least eight towns in southwest Georgia have reported sighting unidentified flying objects with red and green lights. They saw them early yesterday. The state patrol at Albany had called for several persons about 3.30 yesterday morning. The callers included law enforcement officials who reported seeing a large flying object. They described it this way, with a red light on top and a green light on the bottom and flying at treetop level. The patrol said most of the callers said there was a very intensive light beaming well, where out. Where do you of think all us New Yorkers come from, huh? What do you think? There's no UFOs? Speaking of outer space. I don't know. <laughs> what do I know about anything? From the planet Crutron. <laughs> oh, weird. The patrol said most of the callers said there was a very intensive light beaming out of the middle section. Sightings were reported in several area towns, including Arlington, Valdosta, Moultrie, Bainbridge, Thomasville, Camellia, Pelham, and Adele. The patrol said there were no reported aircraft in the area during the time of the sightings were called in, but a flight specialist at the Albany airport said he saw two bright planets at about the same time the UFO sightings were reported. And very quickly, oh, here it is. I could, I could take it when the price of gas went up, you know. And I also could take it when the price of food went up, but now it's too much. The price of beer, wine, and liquor might be going up. <laughs> hey, well, it could happen if the Food and Drug Administration goes through with plans to order companies to list the ingredients in their products. The wine industry says it could cost up to 100 million bucks. The government says they don't know how much it would cost, but one consumer advocate said the amount would be about 35 cents a six pack. <laughs> That hurts. That really hurts. Let's recap the weather. Oh, first of all, our uh, 
Our little joke here, tonight's joke comes from Mrs. Jasper Quartz down in Hydalia, Georgia. Mrs. Quartz writes in, Hey, did you hear about the combination motel and delicatessen? It's for catered affairs. <laughs> Mrs. Quartz, gee whiz, thank you very much for sending that in, strange broad. Our weather, it'll be uh, clearing up a little bit tonight, low around 40 degrees, partly sunny, windy on Friday, and uh, high around 60. Clear and cool Friday night, so it looks pretty good. The Hawks, unfortunately, lost last night to uh, Washington. Final score was 105 to 96, but they'll do better the next time. Our program tonight has been pre-recorded. Special appearance by Joe, the 50-year-old hippie Kelter, who is our unidentified flying object. And I'm Bill Teich, and good night or good morning, whatever the case may be. And Mr. Dynamite. Thank you. To 17 update early in the morning with Bill Tush. Look at him. He's asleep. I'll get him. <laughs> Well, good morning and welcome to 17 Update Early in the Morning. I'm Bill Taj, and our weather forecast overnight is going to be mostly cloudy and colder for uh, overnight and again on Saturday with a low expected tonight to get down into the low 30s. It'll be clear and cold on Saturday night with a uh, high expected Saturday to get into the mid 40s. Sunny and cool on Sunday, so hopefully by the weekend some nice weather and a high expected near 50. Well, in sports, the Falcons, of course, will be playing Denver on Sunday and other yeah. With me is Linda Smith, and Linda, where are you from? Atlanta. You're Linda Smith of Atlanta, just carried out of a bank vault at the First National Bank, the Buckhead branch, just a few minutes ago. She won a contest on WQXI Radio. Night train. How'd she uh, get the money? Tell me about the, the contest yet. Well, we ran on the air a contest called the Great Atlanta Bank Caper, and what you had to do was, like, identify the mystery bandits who were... Glenn Campbell, Barbie Bend, and Steve Bartkowski. When she won, uh, she was like very excited, but uh, I think I was even a little bit more excited than she was because I think I lost my voice in the process. <laughs> so her brothers only gave her the answer? Right. They went over, the, they reviewed the clues 10 straight days, and they went over them, all, every clue that was given on the air, and they eventually came up with the, uh, the identity of the, the mystery bandits in order, which, which they had to be, and she won. How much money do you think you got? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any idea at all. What was it like in there? It's pretty big. Got excited? It one, uh huh. It was just in one big old pile. What are you going to do with the money? I'll put it in the bank. Put it right back in? You're going to put it in the uh -huh. same way you got it out? Yeah, uh huh. You're going to run it from the truck back into the vault? No. <laughs> okay, Linda, thanks a lot and congratulations. Night train, thanks Thank for talking you. to us. Sure thing. Okay. What you see there are the leftovers. And I'm going to figure out a way to get in there. For the First National Bank, the Buckhead Branch, I'm Bill Tush. Thank you, Bill. Weather for the weekend, mostly cloudy, colder overnight and again on Saturday, but by Sunday has some sunshine, be a little bit cool, high expected near 50. And tonight's joke comes from Elmo Gribbets in Vidalia. Elmo sent in this little bit of humor. Should there be sex before marriage? Not if it delays the ceremony. <laughs> Old Elmo, you weirdo, you're a regular Milton Burrow, you know that. Well, that's our news. 10.30 Sunday morning, I'll be here for Academy Award Theater. I do hope you'll join me then. Have yourself a good weekend. This program has been pre-recorded. I'm Danny Metz speaking. Oh, you got to have friends. The healing's all so strong. You got to have friends. But they're gone Something came and took them away And from the dusk till the dawn Here's where I will stay Standing at the end of the road But waiting for my new friends to come I don't care if I'm hungry or cold Freezing, I got to get me some Cause you got to have...
From around the world and up your own backyard, here's the news, the sports, the weather, and all the other important stuff you need to know. Now with all the news, sports, weather, and all the stuff you need to know, here's little Billy Tush. Well, hi kids, and welcome aboard for another fun newscast this morning. How you doing? I hope you had a good weekend and a good Thanksgiving. I, of course, took a couple days off, was up in my old hometown of Pittsburgh there, and had the opportunity to be in a bar when a Steeler game was on yesterday, and it was a zoo, I mean to tell you. They still make beer cans out of steel up there. The weather clear and cool tonight with a low around 30. It'll be sunny and cool on Tuesday with a high in the mid-50s. Then fair Tuesday night and Wednesday low tonight. Extramarital activities by the late president. Cox Newspapers, owners of the Journal and Constitution here in Atlanta, were so nice with the stories that they gave us on Turner Communications' purchase of the Atlanta Braves that we just have to mention that they have acquired four daily newspapers in Texas. The dailies are in Waco, Austin, Port Arthur, and Lufkin. The deal between Cox and Newspapers Incorporated was completed in Waco, Waco Texas on Tuesday. Cox Enterprises now publishes uh, newspapers in Ohio, Florida, Georgia, and also now in Texas. Scratch my back, we'll scratch yours. Although the Postal Service says Outer space real estate is selling well these days. The Maryland Academy of Sciences is raising money to be selling stars, planets, and the sun. A spokesman says this month alone, 100 stars have been sold for $25 apiece. The Academy is giving buyers deeds to their heavenly bodies and all their objects coming within their gravitational field. So that's something we got to look forward to in the future. A hundred years from now, somebody, you know, discovers a star and lands on it. And then some guy that's here, his family will say, ah, my grandfather bought that a hundred years ago. And Gary Dahl sends out thanks to everyone that made this Christmas merry for him and his family. Gary's a guy that invented the Pet Rock. The Pet Rock sells for $4 a piece, and Dahl put them on sale three months ago, and they've uh, passed the 1 million sales mark. I got one here, really. This is an honest-to-goodness one, and all day yesterday I spent trying to train this thing to do all the tricks that it's supposed to do. Look at it. Sit up, boy. Come on. Sit up. Sit up. Roll over. Come on, roll. Play dead. Be right back. Television eye hypnotizing me in my bed. I got no time to sleep. Here's a strange story. Warden Jack Krebs says two of the three inmates who fled the Stone Mountain Correctional Institute early yesterday turned themselves in last night after visiting with their families. Krebs says 23-year-old Johnny Robinson of Nelsonia, Virginia, went to Griffin to see relatives he hasn't seen in years, then caught a bus back to the prison, and 21-year-old Kenneth Gillen of Winder was returned to the facility by his mother and stepfather. Krebs says the inmates were worried about their families, but they decided to return to the prison once they saw them. Another escapee, 35-year-old Charles Reed of Warner Robins, is still at large. He was serving a life term for murder. The chairman of the state penal committee says he will push legislation at the coming general. And that about does it for our little thing here this morning. Again, special thanks to our director, Mr. Mike Dynamite Allen. On audio tonight, the amazing Ron, the Polish King Buckwald. I'll see you later. Wake up, Steve. This program has been pre-recorded. Until next time, we must say adieu. Adieu, adieu. How do you do? This is Tom Subinski speaking.